Hi, David O'Dell, day number two on this job site. Waiting for concrete, 7 a.m. Concrete's due for 7.30 arrival. This is what we accomplished on day one. We got the rebar, we got our dowels every four feet. Rebar grid at two foot both ways. Plastic on the, on the brick wall for splatters. Because we're gonna tailgate this and wheelbarrow it. Combinations so they're gonna get more splattering. This car is gonna get moved. Otherwise it's gonna get hammered probably. And we've got our boxes. These are traffic bearing boxes up to I believe uh, 2,000 pounds per box. These have all been preset at grade and we're just gonna go deep around them. You can see the depth I left here. So that's gonna lock it in. It's not going anywhere. You could back over it, do whatever you want with it. It's not moving. Got We ran all of our cable lines underneath the boxes. And uh, we're pouring a 3,000 PSI one inch rock on this one with fiber mesh this is heavy duty stuff you can park a semi on it basically anyway uh let's get back to uh let's get the tripod going and watch the progress all right so i laid some plastic over that brick wall because we're going to be tailgating and you know whenever you're tailgating it splatters a lot more than when you're pumping i found so we cover a few things, I'll do things a little bit differently off the tailgate. First I started with putting concrete around those boxes. You know, I put it, I placed it on all four sides equally coming up so the box wouldn't shift. And that was the idea behind that. Now I can go ahead and uh, just start dropping it in the hole. Now I won't bring those tires up onto the driveway. I'm gonna stop it right on top of the approach. As you can see, this driveway's already got some cracks in it and why risk uh, making them worse? This is a 3,000 one inch minus rock. Also, we got some fiber mesh in there. And I happen to have that fiber mesh that I use uh, in stock at my storefront. Now you'll notice there's no dobies underneath this rebar. And that's because uh, initially I thought I was probably going to have to wheelbarrow a few. And it's not easy wheeling over elevated rebar as you may well know. So instead we can wheel it in and raise the rebar as we go, but the chutes got close enough to where I could just push it with a shovel. So we got the hardest part down, the part we had to drag with the shovel to get it up to the top end of the job site. Now, once we get this rotted off here, we can place it with, uh, right out of the chute with minimal shovel work. Now, you'll notice that uh, plastic there, how it's underneath the concrete. And the reason I do that is just because it stays in place much easier than trying to tape the bottom or do a lot of other tricky stuff with the plastic. Just uh, run it wild, throw the concrete on top of the plastic, and you're done it's not going anywhere then and this is only like a 0.25 mil plastic so very flexible so you're not going to get no air pockets behind it it's going to move when the concrete hits it or anything hits it for that matter it's very very thin stuff in fact it's so thin that if you hang this on a wall just the um static electricity in it will hold it vertically that tells you how light and thin that stuff is a little bit so you'll notice the shovel that we're using there it's a short handle shovel also on the side of that shovel it has a notch in it and what that notch does is allows you to 
grab the rebar with the side of your shovel and pull it up. That's all custom stuff though. I don't think they make them that way, but a right angle grinder, put a notch in the side of any shovel real quickly. The nice thing about pouring with this, uh, when you're using the big rock like this, is it's a lot more crack resistant than your pea gravel mixes. On those boxes, um, you'll notice I also wrap the lids with plastic as well to try to keep those clean. But the only real purpose for the lids even being in there, you really don't need them in there at this point. The only reason I have them in there, just that some, so somebody doesn't step into a hole while we're pouring concrete. That's about it. Otherwise, you just leave the lids out and then they never get dirty. So I decided to use a wood bowl float on this one to start with. I have no idea why. It was just just how it was going. Because I, I have both tools available to me. The magnesium or the wood. And this was just one that I thought, well, you know what? I think I'm going to go wood on this. And that's what I did. I think it's most likely because we got the big rock here and I can really work the concrete with the woody dragging it you know here and there moving some creams where I want them to go a little easier then I'm gonna let a little bleed water come up then I hit it with the mag and now that's what you have what's your what you're looking at now We have two saw cuts in the existing driveway and what we'll do is we'll just match off of those with our joints. We're going to wet joint these today, half inch radius, three quarter deep, but we'll start by using the three foot long, two and a half inch deep cutter. And what that cutter does, as you see there, what it's going to do is going to break the aggregate deep. And then whether you use a quarter inch half inch three quarter deep whatever you want to use it's going to guarantee to crack there because the, the aggregate is separated all the way down to the rebar basically you'll notice how it's riding a little high because i'm probably already setting on top of rebar which is good because that that um, lets you know that uh, the rebar is not on the dirt Now this joiner right here is pretty pretty narrow joiner. It's still a half inch radius, but very narrow. A narrow gap. A little bit harder to run than say your Arizona. So we've taken two joints off the existing saw cuts there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and run another one up the middle. So basically these, these squares break down to a six or five, about six foot by seven foot squares is what we ended up with here. As the concrete gets um, a little drier, probably on our final pass by hand with the hand trowels, then we go ahead and cut that plastic off the wall because it is so thin. You can cut it with anything. You can cut it with your finger now if you really want to. Now 
but we'll just use the edge of a trowel since normally trowels are fairly sharp if they've been used in fact you could probably shave with a good used trowel That's a 10 inch wide. Notice how where the um, pole meets the edger. Typically you won't see, you'll see them squared out right there and you can't really get them down. I, I actually notched that out so I could lay the pole all the way down and I could run four poles off of that walking edger. The way you get them, you can, you're lucky if you can run two poles because the angle would be so high. So what I do is I notch out the excess steel so I can drop the handle all the way down to the ground if I want to. And run four poles and still get it out and back. Now we've ran we've ran our joiner, we've ran our walking edger. Now we use the funny float to knock out all the excess lines. Being careful not to cover over the joints. Now I've pulled the lids out of these boxes, removed the plastic, washed the top of the lids on the, on the side yard over there in the lawn. They'll be ready to go back in. I'll go ahead and broom the concrete before I even put the lids back. If the lids go in before you broom, the broom goes over them, then you got concrete residue on top of the lids again now you'll notice that light standard post base there how it's low in comparison to what I just did that's because uh, the light post standard base is lower than the city sidewalk so we don't really want to match something that's wrong just in case they want to make it right you know they don't have to um, make mine wrong. Easy way for that post standard base is uh, just do a little one inch overlay. Real simple. They make they have some products you could pour right on top of that and it'll be good to go. It's not gonna you're not gonna be driving vehicles on that. I mean, because if you did, you'd probably run into the post when that's close. So it's not like you have to worry about it not adhering or staying there. You don't even get foot traffic in that actually. So here we are, we're going to work it uphill. We've already pulled the board off the back. So we made one pass by the, off the sliders uphill. Now it's broom time. 50% nylon, 50% horsehair. A one way stroke right there. And now that I've seen that they didn't do well, I pushed it back the other way. I keep that broom well oiled with uh, some WD-40. It helps with the concrete not uh, sticking to the, the horse hair, keeping it nice and oiled.
Oh, there's your finished product. Ready for an RV. No, in about three, four days. Put an RV up on there. No problem. He's going to get a new lid right there. That's the original lid. I just transferred to that box. But the new lid is coming in because that particular lid's not traffic bearing. The box, however, is that's underneath it. But that lid will be getting traded out. It's on order. Anyway, thank you for watching and have a good day.